So the drives finally arrived in the mail and it was time to start taking apart the cage I had for them and paint it. I hit it with the self-etching primer and painted the same color as the case, that awesome flat black. And This time I'm assembling it with all black screws and hardware so it's going to look really sharp and tie in with the rest of the build. I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. This has a SATA backplane so you can hot swap the hard drives which is a nifty little feature. I think it adds a touch of class to this system. It actually took a little bit of doing to install it in the chassis because the screws didn't let it slide in so I had to assemble it inside the chassis one piece at a time. But I think the look was definitely worth the effort. Okay, so I have most of my hardware kind of where I want it to be, so it's time to start the wiring process. And I'm going to start with some of the custom wires, like this power supply plug that I'm going to stick in the back. This is going to take me hours to kind of figure out and get perfect. So of course, one of the most exciting parts of any build is the graphics card. And for this build, we're using two of my very favorite graphics cards that you can purchase right now. You can already look at benchmarks online and do comparison tests and power consumption. But I want to talk about why this graphics card is special for me. In my case, as you can see, it's not going to be butting up against my hard drives. I'm going to have plenty of room for cable management. Not only that, the exhaust isn't going to be dumping right into my hard drive bay. It's going to be dumping out to the middle section of the case where I can easily exhaust it with a fan or through another design. Another thing that I really love about this, of course, its compact size, are my mini ITX cases, such as my S4 that's coming out. It fits in the S3, and so when I'm able to put premium top-of-the-line graphics cards in a really portable uh, mini ITX case, that's that's a very big deal for me. And it's just and it's just drop dead gorgeous. I love them. It's my favorite card. I highly recommend an anti-stack mat to protect your components against ESD. Crossfire doesn't use bridges like these anymore, so we can have a much neater build that's simpler to install. You will need two Crossfire compatible graphics cards. You also need some screws to install the cards into the chassis. Finally, you're going to need some power connectors. These graphics cards take two 8-pin connectors. I'm using a 6-pin connector that has a plus 2 dongle on the end. If you don't have a connector that's compatible, manufacturers often include adapters like this double 6-pin to 8-pin connector. I don't need this. Now that we have everything we need at hand, let's get started. Start by identifying at least two 8x PCIe slots on your Crossfire compatible motherboard. Next, identify the geometry on your graphics card which corresponds to these PCIe slots. On the left, you have the PCI Keeper tab. On the right, you have the Power Port. The long one in the middle is for data. I recommend taking the PCI key and aligning it with the chassis first. This will make everything else line up much easier. When everything's lined up, you can put pressure on the graphics card, and if you've done it right, the Keeper tab on the end will snap into place. Notice how I didn't press hard enough for this graphics card. For this top graphics card, the Keeper tab does snap into place, indicating I installed it all the way. If you find yourself having problems installing an expansion card, I really recommend that you unscrew everything else and then see if it will fit. Finally, we have to plug in our cables. If the cables are keyed so you can't plug them in upside down, unless you press really hard. Notice how I'm combining a 6-pin and a 2-pin dongle to form an 8-pin. Line them up, then stick them in. Once the expansion cards are installed correctly, I'll reward myself by peeling off the protective tape. Mmm, OCD relief. This is the point in the build where if everything works right, it will turn on and it won't explode. Well, the PC looks nice and all, but that doesn't mean anything if it doesn't run well. So I'm going to install the drivers, configure Crossfire, do some benchmarks, overclock the CPU, and then I'm going to game. <laughs> 